Figures in AEW are said to be unhappy with Dax Harwood's podcast. Also, an ex-WWE star was backstage at Raw. And is Naomi going to join Sasha Banks at tomorrow's New Japan Pro Wrestling Wrestle Kingdom? Hello, everybody. Happy New Year. It's Jack and Ross from Cultaholic. Uh, there's been a lot of... Well, you'll never believe it, Ross. There's been some There's been some sniping and some backstage arguing in AEW. There has been. This one comes from Dax Harwood's new podcast. A fantastic listener, I might say. We learned that Orange Cassidy drinks the, the alcohol with the FTR. Backstage, FTR bring a bottle of tequila every single week and share it with the boys <laughs> in the boys' locker room. It's, it's all roses school. backstage, apart from one bit reported by Dave Meltzer and Mr. Brian Alvarez. Meltzer saying, from what I heard from different people, not the people who you probably heard from. Who did Alvarez hear from? I don't know. I don't know. It could be anybody That's apart just... from Chris Jericho. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they were not particularly happy, uh, particularly happy uh, at all about this. They being the, the people locker room, backstage yeah. in AEW, yeah. What did Alvarez said, gives you best Alvarez impersonation. Uh, Alvarez said, all I heard the other day. Is that all right? Is yeah. Right? yeah. So Matthew does a better one. Uh, all I heard the other day was how unhappy people were about that podcast. And then Dave said, oh yeah, me too. So basically Melter and Alvarez are saying that they've both heard from separate sources within AEW that people generally were not happy about what was said on Dax Harwood's podcast. Now, just to recap the situation, uh, Dax Harwood's got this new podcast, FTR with Dax Harwood. It sounds like you've given it, it more of a listen it's, than that. It's taken over William Regal's podcast feed, so it's hosted by Matt Coon, who did okay. the Gentleman Villain podcast, William mm. Regal, and they just have a little nice little conversation. The topic of episode one was uh, CM Punk and just, you know, him being in AEW and all that sort of stuff, and Harwood just gives sort of background what the, the sort of, like, the backstage happenings are like in AEW and stuff like that. Yeah. But it's interesting, because <clears throat> listening to him, he wasn't just going oh this guy's a dick he's an arsehole I hate him he's like I hope he doesn't mind me saying this but just to right. clarify what I mean here but he was very very careful in what he was saying so it's interesting that this story is a thing okay because he seemed to be not treading on eggshells but definitely like being careful being more considerate than wrestlers tend to be when yeah. they're shooting um, so Dax also in this podcast defended CM Punk or in, in a way was very kind about CM Punk mm. and even issued a plea for all parties involved with the all out post press conference brawl to, to shake hands and, and put their differences aside to work together because the future of the industry is at stake because if I, I understand what he's saying like if they would all work together it would it would put butts in seats Ross yeah it definitely would and it, 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 he just paints CM Punk as a really nice guy. Just he, he tells a story of when the Pinnacle started working with CM Punk and the, the MGF feud and all that stuff. He got all the Pinnacle members, even Sean Spears, in the same room at the same time and gave them $500 like um, Starbucks gift cards. Oh, fair enough. He's the nicest guy in the world ever. Um, we should not believe any journalist ever. CM Punk seemingly responded to this as well because he was responding to an Instagram post which referenced this Dax Harwood plea for everybody to work together and just commented, duh, as if to be like, well, that's the obvious. Well, it seemed like he was saying that's the obvious course of action yeah. um, but it has since been reported in the Wrestling Observer newsletter that top stars including Y2J Chris Jericho uh, reassured the AW locker room that they would not let CM Punk return <laughs> don't worry Chris no. Jericho standing at the door yeah. <laughs> with his phone on to Dave Meltzer but also with a sword and a shield saying get away CM Punk yeah so there's obviously a split locker room here some people are in the pro it seems like some people are in the pro punk camp some people are very much not in the pro punk camp and and Meltzer even said on his um, on 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 Wrestling Observer Radio they need to have another meeting. They need to have a company wide meeting and just say, look, can this just all stop, please? Just not have him work with the elite. I think that's the solution because when it was great with CM Punk. It hasn't been better, maybe apart from Hangman and Omega in AEW, but yeah. when it was obviously, you know, then His feuds heads. were amazing. Yeah, yeah but when yeah. it started putting heads, that's when it all just fell apart. Just yeah. keep them separate. <laughs> I don't, that's easy, very, very easy thing for me to say, obviously. Yes, although uh, uh, this could just be from my point of view, but it seems like maybe Dax Harwood isn't reflecting the general mood of the AW locker room. I think Matthew made an interesting podcast on the last ever 2022 edition of the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast saying a lot of what they're doing at the moment, FTR, are sort of poking the bear. Like, little, the, the stuff about CM Punk on their social medias and stuff like that and just little things they're doing in the, in the press and little, you know, little comments they're making. The, 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 an interview with Sean Ross that was referenced about CM Punk once again. That maybe they could be poking the bear in, in terms of looking to the future and maybe going back to 
somewhere else or yeah you know. you, I mean you never know you never know it's yeah. an interesting one it, I, I wouldn't be surprised um, going over to WWE now because we did just have an episode the first 2023 edition of Monday Night Raw various things happened on the show we'll whiz through them now Seth Rollins was seemingly injured against uh, Austin Theory although there were various clues which maybe suggest and I don't want to sound too callous here but maybe suggest that it was a bit of a work well the second last move of the match Jack was a chop block to the knee I mean Corey Graves was yeah. shouting cut the knee withstand the pain yeah, I mean, it, it, should be it a seemed work a bit of a... It's basically, it kind of harkened back to when Rollins really injured his knee in 2015 at a house show where he went for the like the sunset flip power bomb off okay. the top and landed on his knees and one of them buckled. I think it was just to make Theory look more like a bastard, wasn't it? Yes, the and also to give him a, an excuse to beat Rollins as well. I don't think they'd have him beat him clean. Yeah. Um, but after the show, it seemed like they're definitely playing this off as if it's a real injury because there was an X thrown up. Corey Graves left the commentary position to check on Rollins. Um, Rollins tried to walk up the ramp and then collapsed. It was all a bit off kilter. It wasn't quite as like clean as a worked injury normally would be. So if it, we suspect it is a work, but it's a little bit more, I guess, um, a little bit more presented as a shoot. But it does make Austin Theory look like more of a healer shield. It does, yeah. And you know who else is injured? <clears throat> Inside the membrane. It's Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss. Oh my gosh, she's being corrupted, <clears throat> everybody. She's having a match with Bianca Belair last night. We see a little boop on the Tron. Mm -hmm. We see two fellas. I thought the first guy in the crowd was Akira Tozawa. I was just trying to think of people with bleach blonde hair. Yeah. They had the Uncle Howdy masks on, basically two fellas in the crowd. Alexa Bliss gets distracted by them. The little stuff happens on the Tron. And then she snaps. She sends Bianca Belair face first into the, into the steel steps. There's blood pissing out the face of Bianca Belair. This is after they've done the, uh, the scary movie spot with, uh, oh, Cindy, the TV's leaking. That yeah. one, you know, yeah, yeah. that was fantastic scenes anyway. And then, yeah, it just looks like Alexa Bliss is now being sort of, we're turning the screw a little bit more with mm. the stuff with The Fiend. We're still <clears> taking our time, but eventually we'll get there. Maybe the rumble in this dark lights out, turn the light, big light off, ma'am. Match against LA Knight. I don't know what they call it. What Quite was the, possibly. That was the one, yeah. Um, you tell you else is going to be at the rumble. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Country music star Hardy. We should say as well, Alexa Bliss did an interview oh. with Byron Saxton later in the night, and Byron was like, you lost control out there, didn't you? And she's like, no, I gained control mm. inside Bianca's mind. So she's on board with it, but she's not on board with it. So, but more, more do, importantly, do you know who else is in control? Hardy. <laughs> Hardy. We don't know. Well, I don't know. Speaking for myself, I you might a be clue. a big fan. No, <laughs> it's country music. It doesn't exist over here in the UK. We don't have it. Um, country music star Hardy jumped into the ring during the match between Solo Sokoa and Elias to defend his fellow musician Elias. He, he, I'm pleased to say though, it wasn't like one of those ones where the celebrity gets the better of the wrestler. He smashed the guitar over Solo's back, and it did nothing. Yeah, and he ran away. Yes, and he ran Carry away. Carry as quick as it'll take you said Corey Graves a word to that effect so yes. yeah Hardy's going to come back and apparently perform his hit song sold out in the Alamo Dome oh, later it's in, this month yeah. it's in Texas right uh, oh well fair enough then okay I understand <laughs> um, so Hardy was there on Raw and he'll be there at the Rumble as well and elsewhere backstage at Raw as well PW Insider said that Summer Rae was there um, but it was in Nashville calm down calm down it was, a, it, was, <laughs> it was in Nashville and apparently she's local to the area so it was yeah. just I mean nice nice that she'll go hello on. yeah it's nice right. I didn't suggest that she'll be part of the on-screen product I, I wouldn't be against it I like Summer Rae she's actually. a WWE legend she is I, I'm not a I, I always think she's funny at what she, she when is she, funny she does, yeah, she's stuff good. with Rusev and the fish back in the day was she was the one saving grace of that story oh yes yeah. um, also uh, there's a big show tomorrow of course New Japan Pro Wrestling's Wrestle Kingdom uh, and there's, it's a really unique Wrestle Kingdom this year because there's WWE star AWE star on the show which is Carl Anderson there's also going to be AEW involvement as well and there's the possibility well we'll talk about that in a second of Sasha Banks turning up but AEW have apparently responded to to WWE's involvement in New Japan Pro Wrestling. This was uh, according to Rocky Romero speaking to Fightful. He says that speaking with Tony, he speaks with Tony Khan quite frequently and filled in Tony about what was going on with WWE and New Japan and said that Tony isn't shy about asking either. What does he is, say, Jack? <laughs> say the line. He said, what's that? You always do it, the impersonation. Oh, I'm not going to sit here and take this. No, I can't say the full line, but yeah. <laughs> um, he also said that Tony Khan understood why it was happening, why WWE were involved as well as AEW and was cool about it Wrestle Kingdom takes place tomorrow and there's a part two later on in January as well um, so it's a, it's a unique one but Ross the big story going into Wrestle Kingdom at least from a, a western audience point of view is the likelihood of Sasha Banks possibly turning up and not only that but not only that 
But not only that, Naomi's also going to be there as well. Uh, maybe, Allegedly. Maybe. According to PW Insider, who say that Banks' WWE Women's Tag Team Championship partner, Trinity Naomi Fatu, is currently slated to be in Japan. New Japan sources not confirm if they are bringing Naomi in and intimated she was coming off her own accord. So it may be that Fatu is simply traveling to, to Japan to join Venado at the event to support her and won't be seen publicly. Well, that's nice. She's that's going with her friend. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's going to be very interesting. And the implication seems to be that Sasha will challenge for that women's IWGP championship, the very new belt, and could possibly face Kyrie, the artist formerly known as Kyrie Sane for it. Are we writing off Mrs. Tanaka? Uh, yeah. Tom. 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 Big Tom Nakano. Uh, Tom yeah. Nakano. You, ah, you've mashed her names together. No, you, no, you were Nelly. It's yeah. too early in the new year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much for watching this news video. I've been Jack. This has been Ross from Cultaholic, and there'll be more news later on today. Stay tuned, and we'll see you very soon.